right, so announcements, announcements, announcements. First of all, our Zedica box, which is our offering box, is back there on the worship table. Vanna White, showing us there, look at there. Um, I challenge you to challenge God. You got a penny, you got, you have no idea how far a penny can go with this ministry, with this church, with this tribe, with this part of the bride. So, um, there should be, not that we're going here today, but it's been on my mind for a few days now. There should be pain in the offering. You know what I mean by that? There should be some pain in the offering. You got a dollar, and it's the only dollar you have. You give God that dollar and see what happens. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It just it shows up, doesn't it? The blessings. Now that's not why we give, okay? We give because it's not ours anyways, y'all. It all belongs to Him. Everything we have belongs to him. And so, um, just the story behind the Zedica box, we have never been, you know, you go to a church, I call them, you go to a soup church, and, and they pass the plate, you know. We've never been to pass the plate church. What are we going to pass the plate for, you know? It just brings guilt and condemnation. And, and then, I don't know, we've been doing it for a year probably. About a year ago, the Lord said, Stop robbing my people of their blessings. And I was like, oh, oh, it hurt. I got a spanking. That's a God spanking. And so we uh, call it our Zedica box because that means the charity box. It's the offering box. And I cannot tell you how much the Lord's done with that for the year that we've been collecting. So that's just amazing. Um, Friday is Bible study. Is it four? We uh, started off Bible study this week at four and everything was going good until this like tornado type storm began to come toward the bridge and started rolling this way. We had to roll it up quick and folks get to cover and, and whatnot. <clears throat> and so as we were leaving the park, there's tree limbs down everywhere. And I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus, for keeping us safe. Um, so we're, used, we're here on Fridays unless it's raining. And then um, we're always here on Thursdays. What we do, flyers, if you didn't get one already, um, get some when the church is over. Take it to somebody and share with somebody um, to come visit and come check us out. And so I will tell you that we're here on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays at 4 o'clock. That just works. Everything's at 4. That way you can remember it. Um, we appreciate everybody that helped set up today. If you didn't get a chance to help set up, feel free to hang around afterwards and... Um, help us tear down and put everything back in the trailer and we have a, a, at least one baptism today so we're going to tear it down after eating and get over to the river over here and wash the feet and do some dunking and hold her under in Jesus name till the bubbles stop just to be sure we got to go to <laughs> I am really excited because this has been asking to be baptized for a long time Of 
work. You know, in John 3, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and he's telling him, man, we've all come into this world the same way. We've all been born of water, but we've got to be born of the Spirit because God is Spirit and we worship Him in Spirit and truth. So, so important. Um, on the back table back there, on the music table, there's also a charging station, although it looks like electronics that my husband created. Seriously, I'm telling you. I'm saying, I'm like, this man is an electrician ever showed up at our house. He had a heart attack. But we do have charging ports back there and on the sound table for your phones or batteries or whatever. Um, another thing, the needs list is over there at the end of the food table. And I just want to share with you guys, so important. You don't have to put your last name, especially if you don't want to, but at least put your last initial. Because we have two Michaels. We have two Jonathans. We have, you know, so it helps us to know which one we're pulling for. Because we try to pull by knowing you. You know what I'm saying? It's important. If you like green shirts and you put you need a shirt on there, I want to be sure and get you a green shirt. And so, um, super important on that. Be sure you put your name and your sizes. Okay? And your sizes. Used to, Jeanette would like to, you don't put a size on here, I'll pull you a little tiny baby size. No one just wants to that. Just to show you. Um, another thing is, um, I have done it before, not on sizes, but somebody asked for batteries and so I gave them one. <laughs> not of the size they needed because it was like a dead seat battery or whatever. I mean, they didn't say. So, you know, that's just important. Um, uh, I want to tell you guys, this is so, so important. Clean your camps for the love of everything under the blue sky. Clean your camps. Keep your camps clean because it keeps you under the radar. So pick up trash. If you need trash bag, write it on the needs list. We'll get you a trash bag. So keep your camps clean because it keeps you under the radar. Staying under the radar helps you have a place to stay. Remember that, right? Um, then also, I said this last week. This is so funny how this happens. Last week I talked. having more than that too. 
too, after this message that I'm pretty sure Jesus is bringing those days. So, um, so remember, you guys are, anyway, oh yeah, I already said all that. Church picnic. We're always doing church when we're getting together, okay? Y'all got to remember that. And um, anyway, he was super, super nice. He was not a part of the Hope team. This is actually his beat. And I guess they're kind of on alert right now because somebody tried to burn down Montgomery Plaza earlier this week, and it was a homeless guy. <clears throat> I said, I promise you, he's not part of our tribe. Right. Our tribe, we got it going on. Yeah, our tribe knows better. And, and not only that, they're afraid of me. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, I think that's it. If you need 
dance in your freedom, dance in your liberty. And we will dance in your freedom, dance in your liberty. Come on! Come on, you gotta say it with me. We will dance in your freedom, dance in your liberty. The spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. Yeah. Where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. Yeah. It's for freedom to set us free. It is for freedom to set us free. Tell me who, 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 
can't do the things you do. Ain't nobody now. Ain't nobody never tell me who, who, who. Can you do the things you do? Ain't nobody now. Ain't nobody ever. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. and the universe all together. The earth, if it were tilted one way, just a degree, we would burn up. If it were tilted the other way, a degree, we would freeze to them. You're perfect. Tell me who. Tell me who can clean up a mess when we've made such a disaster of our lives. Tell me who can tell us to get in the boat because we're going over there and we know that we're going to go over there when we get in the boat and we listen to you. Tell me who can argue and come to you with questions and you're willing to listen to us and then turn around and say, where were you when I told the ocean to come? Tell me who creates life. Tell me who brings redemption. Tell me who saves us, sozos us, saves, heals, delivers. come together. Will you give us a word and a direction in life to live for you out loud? So, um, I know y'all can believe this, but I'm telling you, I never know what songs we're singing. Very rarely do I know what songs we're singing. Even though I've, I get a text about it, I don't look at it on purpose. Because I love my mind just going because it lines up with what I was going to say. And today is no, it's no different. Um, we're going to be in two, two places today. We're going to talk about Peter, sweet little Peter, Simon. His name was Simon until Jesus changed his name to Peter, calling him the rock. Um, but Peter wasn't always together. Right? We know that, right? Peter was a hot mess. He was um, a little hot-headed. He often did things and spoke things before he ever thought through what he was going to say. Um, I saw a t-shirt that said, um, it said something about, that well, I said to you, I like being just as surprised as I don't like to think before I speak. I like every I like being just as surprised as everybody else. Uh, I don't like to think before I speak, um, which is not me. I, I I think and I choose my words very carefully um, most of the time because you can't take words back. And um, the old saying, "Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me." is a lie from the pit of hell. But what I can tell you is that my God can redeem all of My God is gracious and kind and loving and merciful and just. My God is gentle. He can speak whispers and he can roar like a lion. 
sometimes we need spanking, sometimes we need loving arms around us. You know what I'm saying? So, um, we're going to read just a little bit about Peter because I really want you today to have an understanding about who my God is. I want you to understand because if you can know who he is, then you can believe in him, right? If you can know who he is, then you can trust him, right? You can't trust somebody you don't know. You can't believe in something, not know about him, all right? Know him, know him intimately, inside and out. And the way that we can best do this is by looking at Jesus, because Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You want to know what our daddy looks like? Look at me. Look and see how I live. He said, I don't, I say what the Father says to say. I go where the Father tells me to go. I do what the Father tells me to do. And we can look at the life of Jesus and we can see the Father. So we should have some family resemblance. I've done this several times and we've talked about it. It doesn't matter what we look like on the outside. We should all look the same on the inside. We're all looking like the Father. Are you raising your hand? Peter, second Peter. No, I'm actually going to be in Luke 5. We're talking about Peter. I'm going to be in Luke 5 the first time. Um, when Darren got, got um, converted to Christianity, he had been several things, okay? He had been, he was raised as a male witch. He was raised in a family where the mom's side of the family was Indian and Wiccan or the craft or whatever you want to call it. Boo -doo -boo -doo. Um, and then his dad was a Baptist deacon. I'm not really sure how that worked, but he, um, he was raised as a male witch. He was atheist for a long time, agnostic for a long time. He was Baha'i. I said, ooh, are those those guys that stand in the airport with the shaved head and the flowers? I said, no. Um, and so he got to the place in life where he decided that they can all be wrong, right? All of the religions, okay? They can all be wrong, but they can't all be right. But one could be right. So he began to explore. Now, Darren's very, um, he loves history. He's very detail-oriented. He's um, a researcher by nature. And so he began to research and look at and began to discover that there are physical findings, archaeological findings for the things that are in Scripture that made all of it line up and make sense. And so he needed proof, all right? Look at Thomas. Doubting Thomas, they called him Thomas the Twin. Um, after Jesus had resurrected, he appeared to 11, no, 10 of the 12 disciples in the upper room. And, and then, but Thomas wasn't there. And then later, not too much longer than that, all 11 of them are together because remember Judas is not playing this, these days. And I love it because they're, they, they were afraid for their lives. They're locked, locked in the upper room and Jesus just appears. Oh, oh my God, can he walk through walls and all? Get that? And so he says to Thomas, I'm going to prove to you that I am who I say that I am. Touch the scars. Feel the hole. Feel the wounds. Now you can believe. Okay? So some of us need proof. I, on the other hand, have a very childlike faith. If it says it, I believe it. Period. Okay? If, if Noah built a boat for 120 years, him and his sons built this thing that we call a boat. They didn't know what a boat was. It had never rained before. I, I believe if it says that the Red Sea was parted and they walked across on dry land, y'all, they walked across on dry land. It wasn't muddy. And so if, if it says it, I believe it. All right. Now, so you got two kinds of folks, some that need some proof, and you got some that can just believe. Um, and I can just believe in that hard life. I've heard somebody go, yeah, but I've had a hard life. It's hard just to believe. I've had a hard life, too. And, um, what I love, commercial, what I love is that we are now growing, harvesting fruit from the, the labor, the ground that we've been tilling down here. And you guys are seeing people from your community that live down here with you 
changed before your eyes. Right? Y'all didn't know me before, and I can tell you that all day long. And the one time when my brother was here and said that this this girl, this woman, that's not that's not my sister. I don't know her. I, I was way different. Hey, my brother, for those of you know, my brother went to prison for 20 years, and um, he left in 2001. And he served 20. He served every year, every drop. 20. So he got out in uh, 2021. And I was not the same. He came out of prison, um, came to live with us, and I guess he thought it was just going to be like, I don't know, I really don't know what he thought, but he was like, that's not my sister. Well, I am your sister, but that's not the sister that you knew 20 years ago, because Jesus changes people. Right? So, um, like I said, I love the fact that we've got people from our community that have actually in this time lived out here without a roof that are being changed before your eyes. God changes people. If you let him, man, if you let him. So, um, some people need proof. Some people can just believe. So we're going to look at Peter today, who I'm imagining that Peter, who's a little stubborn, a little hard-headed, a little... Um, a very finite mind okay so I can't imagine being outside of time I, all I know is time that's all we know 24 hours a day you know seven days a week 364.9 days in the year or whatever it is um, I'm pretty sure there's not a in heaven. I'm pretty sure God got it right up there um, so but Peter his, I'm not going to make the noise to get the dog up there. Okay. I would imagine that the Lord said, we're going to need something drastic to get this boy on board. Right? I, I was in a drastic situation in my life when I had to come back to Jesus because I was either going to come back to Jesus or I was just going to end it all. There was, those, those were the only two options that I could see. End it all or come back to somebody, though only one who I knew could fix it. Which is what I did, and, and drastic. Okay. So let's look in Luke 5, starting in verse 1. I'm going to read the story to you, and then we're going to talk about it. So, on one occasion, Jesus was preaching to a crowd on the shore of Lake Galilee. A vast multitude of people were pushing to get close to Jesus to hear the word of God. And he noticed two fishing boats on the water's edge with the fishermen nearby, rinsing their nets. And Jesus climbed into the boat belonging to Simon, Peter, and said to him, Let me use your boat, push it off the shore a distance, away from the shore, so I can speak to the crowd. Um, they fished at night when they caught fish. Remember, remember that little song in Vacation Bible School? They fished all night and they caught no fishes. Fished all night and they caught no fishes. So, Peter and James and John in the sailboat, out on the deep blue sea. Um, And so they had fished all night long. They had come in and they're cleaning their nets. They're done with their work, their day's work. And then Jesus hops into this boat to push me out so I can talk to everybody. So if we can get farther out, we can talk to more people and they can hear. So Jesus sat down and talked to people from the boat. And when he had finished, he said to Peter, Now row out to deep water to cast your nets and you will have a great catch. I know we talked a few weeks ago about when Jesus said, get into the boat because we're going to the other side. 
and then the storm happened in between. Okay, it doesn't matter what happens from when you get in the boat to going to the other side because you know because Jesus said it that you're going to the other side. So this is pretty plain and clear right here. Now row out to deep water to cast your nets. And what's it say? And you will have a great catch. I'm telling you. I'm sure that God, I know God sits up on the throne and shakes his head at me sometimes like, oh my goodness, that Mary. Whew. Please, bless her heart. Exactly. That's a, that God's got, God made that southern thing, that statement right there, probably just for me years ago because he knew I was going to need it. But when God says something, he means it. When it's written in the word, he has said it. Remember, Jesus is the Word, John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was there when everything was spoken into existence because God the Father opened His mouth, and with the breath, the Spirit, the Ruach, because you have to have air to speak, and then the words that came out, that's Jesus, y'all. Everything was made through Him, by Him, and for Him. Jesus is the bee's knees, and when God says it, He means it. Why don't we believe it? He says, this is not good for you, my daughter, my son. Don't put the fork in the electric socket. It's going to hurt you. He says it because he loves us. He says it because he is all-knowing and all-powerful. And Jesus told Peter right here, now row out to the deep water, cast your nets, and you will have a great catch. Now here's Peter. He has proof that he has fished all night and caught no fish. He is now meeting a man that he has never met before who has told him to do something that is opposite of what he can do because they fished at night, not in the daytime. And Jesus is telling him, row out in the daytime. I know you fish at night, but trust me. Row out into the daytime and cast your net and you will catch great fish. James and John, um, the Zebedee fishing brothers, they were over there too. They waved, come on over here, help us in the other boat. And they ended up completely filling both boats with fish until they began to sink. Now, people that are smarter than me say that um, that was probably one ton of fish. donated. We need, to, we need to have fish again. Um, and they're, you know, $5 for one pound of fish. A 
ton, not like a ton, but a ton, a literal ton of fish. Wow, that's a lot of fish. So when Simon Peter saw this astonishing miracle, he knelt at Jesus' feet and fed him. Okay, so I love the fact that we get such good examples from Peter because I know I'm not the only person that's been there. He says, go away from me, Master. I'm a Any entity, any being, any, we know him as the creator of the universe, that can cause a ton, a ton of fish to fill two boats, a couple of months worth of fishing. done with my addiction. I can't get rid of my trash. I have so much baggage. There is no way that I can come to the Lord, believe in Him, confess with my mouth that He is who He says He is, and then be saved. There's no way. Go away from me. no way that there can be any justification or salvation or so-so for me. You don't know who I am. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've done. Oh! My God is a big God, y'all. And loving. Simon, Peter, and the other fishermen, including the fishing partners, um, Jacob, which is another name for James, and John, the sons of Zebedee, were awestruck over the miracle catch of fish. So then here's what Jesus says to sweet Simon. You just cannot fathom being connected to this guy that says, just try one more time with me because you're going to catch a big old fish. He says, do not yield to your fear, Simon Peter. From now on, you will catch men for salvation. That's some redemption, y'all. Jesus says, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how bad you think you are. I don't care how much junk you think you have. I don't care how ugly you have been to anybody and everybody that you know. Jesus said, it's all right. We clean this up. I got a giant bag of Clorox wipes. We got this. Okay? into a trial, but we count it all joy. Because you know what? It's going to do something for us. It's going to clean some of that dirt off. It's going to get rid of some of that stuff that we are really sick and tired of carrying around. Anybody tired of carrying your guilt around with you? Anybody tired of carrying your shame around with you? What about condemnation? Hear me. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. You know why? Because yeah. <laughs> that's not who we are. Amen. Do not be an orphan 
that's a son or a daughter. Don't be a son and a daughter that lives like an orphan, y'all. Every single promise in this word is for us. Every single one. Last week we talked about it, that God has good thoughts about you that outnumber the grains of sand in the sea. We have a recovery class on Sunday night, and last year we were challenged in this class to come up with, I don't know, what, 200 things, 200 grains of sand are in like a cubic inch of sand in the sea? Like millions! And he has those that outnumber the grains of sand in the sea. Good thoughts about every single one of us. I said, well, he must know something about me. I don't know. <laughs> Not really, y'all. For real. I know my identity as a daughter. I walk. I walk out loud as a daughter. Because I live so long as an orphan and then a Christian orphan. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm not going to live like that. I know who I am. I know that I know that I know who I am in Christ. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. It doesn't mean I'm holy. Are you with me? The storm is going to come. Remember the wise man that built his house on the rock and the foolish man that built his house on the sand? The same storm came for both of them. Only smart guy that built his house on a rock. His house stood firm. And when we go through trials and we count it all joy, we count it joy because it's going to develop perseverance. And perseverance is going to develop character. And character develops something else. And then when it's full grown, it leaves us perfect and complete and like nothing. Raise your hand if you want that. Okay, whatever is in the heart, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Above all else, guard your heart. You need no junk in your heart. You don't need, you don't need junk in your heart because it's going to come out at the most inopportune time. You know what I'm saying? Always. Garbage in, garbage out. Righteous in, righteous out. Jesus in, Jesus out. If you squeezed an orange and got apple juice, that'd be weird. <laughs> so if we are professing Christians when the world squeezes us, and it will, Jesus ought to come out. Times get tough. Y'all, I, I was very vocal and very open about the um, uh, wilderness season that we had in our family starting in, well, I thought it started in March, then I realized it started probably in January, and then Holy Spirit said, no, it really started in September. So, we were building up to it, but there were, I can't tell you one thing after another, 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 and I ran out of breath, or I'd have said some more. Y'all, it was rough. It was really rough. And I had the revelation in preaching that one day, whatever day it was, that, oh my gosh, I'm in the wilderness season and I'm not even meeting with the Lord. Remember, I didn't want to come to church. I told Darren, I'm not going. I'm not going and I'm not preaching. And he just ignored me. And then I showed up and all I had to do was be willing. Open my mouth and the Lord spoke. Period. This is not me. This is Him talking to us. Often, I go back and listen to the message. Peter meeting Jesus for the first time and Jesus says listen this is what we're going to do you're going to do this again he goes no 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 we've already washed our net we've already pulled up the shore I've already taken off my fishing hat for the day I'm done with fishing I've already put up my poles I've already let the worms go Jesus said no go out and cast your nets and you will get a big catch follow me and
red folder that's the you can just hold on to it on me right now. My favorite one. The one when they're the, the disciples have been with Jesus all this time and Jesus is asleep in the boat. This is not what we're going to do. And, and they are the storms and the waves, and it's just going like this. And Jesus is sound asleep, and they're like, Wake up! We're fixing to crash. And he just says, Oh, that's it.
says that I'm leaving. I just had to get to the end of myself and then let him be a chain breaker. I'm the one who put chains on me. I didn't serve no time at TDC. I know lots of people that have. I should have. But I was in prison, though. That was good. I didn't serve any time at TDC, but I was in prison. I had imprisoned myself with addictions and a lifestyle of an orphan that was keeping me stuck. Y'all, I got, I got saved July 28, 1978. There's a lot of you in here that wasn't even born then. DJ said. <laughs> 78. I was 15 years old. I knew what I was doing. I did know. I did know what I was doing. I did. That was my original conversion time. That, and I know it because it's right here on my arm. I can't read it very well anymore because I'm not an older. My tattoos are making but, but then I forgot. And I didn't really understand. But I have no excuse because I had one of these. I just listened to the guy on the pulpit. Who, bless his heart, taught wrong. You don't have an excuse if you have one of these. So I have no excuse other than I didn't read it. Therefore, I didn't become it. So it was super easy to walk away. You can walk away from religion because religion kills y'all. Religion is nonsense. Religion is what destroys and divides people because it's all about rules and regulations and chop, chop, chop. And like, okay, that's not my Jesus. Y'all, my Jesus. Just love and get out of the love relationship with him. I want to cast my net on the side. Because of my love relationship with him, I want to give in the offering. And because of my love relationship with him, I want to grow more and more and more. Chew your own food. Chew your own food. Do not. Today you better read Luke 5. Now we're going to John 21. Because, bless his heart. the very very beginning I did the, the big fish thing I did it for you but just to solidify this okay just to be sure that you get it because at this point Jesus has already died on the cross he's already come back from the dead he has appeared to his disciples twice this is the third time he's going to appear but he's soon to leave and so Jesus is making sure that Peter man come on got to be on the same page just in case you I do know it had to do with my granddaughter, and I'm pretty sure it had to do with drinking. Daughters don't do that. Because a long time ago, all my answers to life were at the bottom of a black label Jack Daniels bottle. I promise you there's no answers there. There's nothing there but a life that needs to be laid down. You with me? Amen. So, chapter 21, John chapter 21, starting in verse 1. Later, Jesus appeared once again to a group of disciples by Lake Galilee. It happened one day while Peter, Thomas the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Jacob, John, and two other disciples were all together. And Peter told them, we're going fishing. They're waiting. Okay? They're waiting. Jesus has come back from the dead. Life was really oh, in the balance right there for a little bit. They were hunting the Jesus people down. And, and so they had been hiding. Now they're coming out. And now here's Peter forgotten everything he learned for three years and he said I'm going back to what I used to know. Anybody ever done that? Yeah. He 
says, well, I'm going fishing. And they all replied, well, then we'll go with you. Whoa, that's some prayer pressure right there. They didn't take much. So they went out and fished through the night, but caught what? Nothing. They fish at night because that's when you fish. And they fished all night and they caught nothing. Because when you try to do this in your own power, you will catch nothing. Woo. Except maybe an STD. You will have nothing that's fruitful that shows the fruit growing on your tree that says Jesus Christ is in me. Because when the world squeezes me, and it does and it will, remember trials in one, going into one, coming out of one, squeezing me? Jesus is what's going to come out. Not perfect. That, that wilderness season, that when I had the aha moment here in the middle of preaching, that I could have spent all my time in this wilderness season with the Father. Oh my goodness, what a waste. But let me just tell you, I immediately spent time with the Father because my eyes were open, because I got a God spanking, because it was brought to my attention. Look, you have squandered these last months. Now, I wasn't throwing a pity party. I was still standing strong because I'm no stranger to spiritual warfare. Yo, know, this right here is front row trench warfare for the kingdom. Because when we change, when our people, when our tribe changes, it looks very profound for the world to see. Somebody that just, and I'm not knocking suit churches, don't hear me. Somebody that just wanders in off the street, you know, maybe he's a businessman and his wife has left him and he's a raging alcoholic, he's fixing to lose his business, his kids don't talk to him anymore, and he goes into church and he gets saved. And he still goes to the same office and he still wears a suit. He didn't drink anymore, but his wife's not coming back and his children may to get to talk to him. There's no radical change in that because he still cusses and he still goes to rated R movies and he still watches things that makes God sad on TV. But he's saved and he walked the aisle and now he's on somebody's number list at some church somewhere. But what about the change? change is important. The change is evidence that Jesus is in me. Because Jesus is in me. What about the change? And I've been very honest and truthful, okay? Weird. I'm not, I'm not no walking saint. My list of sins and who I used to be is terribly long. And I was still smoking pot when I was preaching. Until I realized that Jesus never tried to sin and get away with it. right will you not be accepted but if you do what is wrong sins crouching at your door it desires to have you decimate you destroy you but you must overcome it and then I'm like, oh, I don't, that's not who I, that's not what daughters do you with me that's not what daughters do there are that's not what daughters do i'd like to sometimes i'd like to whip somebody's head off but that's not what daughters do Amen. instead i pray for them come on instead i bless them yeah with me. Yeah. So, we're learning to be sons and daughters and getting rid of the orphan lifestyle. Don't let the price that Jesus paid be for nothing. So, later, he appeared. They went fishing. Well, we'll go with you. So, they went out and they fished all night but caught nothing. Then at dawn, Jesus was standing there on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize it was him. At least this time they didn't yell, it's a ghost. <laughs> called out to them saying, hey guys, did you catch any fish? That's a normal question that you would ask if you've seen a boat coming back in. Y'all catch anything? Not a thing, they replied. Dead gummit, not a thing. Then Jesus shouted to them, throw your net over the starboard side and you will catch some. Okay, now this story starting to look familiar, y'all. He's telling them what to do and what's going to happen when they do it. Throw your net over the starboard side and you will catch some. <clears throat> you would think that Peter would have said, this sounds familiar. Right? Don't dish yourself if you miss it. If you miss it. Okay? 
because Peter, that's how he came into this gig, was throwing his net and catching fish after he fished all night and caught nothing. Now it's daytime and we don't fish during the day and you're going to have a great catch. But here's the same same rules of engagement. Throw your net over the starboard side and you will catch great fish. At least this time he didn't argue. I mean, we're getting something right. So they did as he said, and they caught so many fish, they couldn't even pull in the net. Jesus says, test in your net, you're going to catch a whole bunch of fish. Get in the boat, we're going to the other side. Walk on this water to me, and you're not going to see. Just don't take your eyes off of me. Die to self, pick up your cross, and follow me daily. Remember, nobody was around when I walked away. 1983. Shame and guilt and condemnation. But nobody, not one, said to put life without Jesus. We're sorry you made a mistake. All life comes from God. The mistake was the back seat. The life is not the mistake. Come on. Don't do life without Jesus. Not one. And I grew up with them for 18 years. So, that's the way it did for me. I'm going to do it for everybody. Because everybody deserves that chance. Look, here's the opportunity that Jesus is trying to give you. Just put your net in the water, and I promise you, you're going to catch some fish. Just follow me. Just follow me. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, This is funny. So this is the Gospel of John. And the disciple whom Jesus loved is John. That was his little nickname. So he's writing that about himself. John said to Peter, It's the Lord. Again, how come, we, how come Peter didn't recognize the Lord to begin with? It's the same, same thing. Put your head in the water, you're going to catch a bunch of fish. It would only been three years. It's not like it had been 60 and his mind was fading. Put your net in the water and you're going to catch great fish. It's the Lord. And so when Peter heard him say that, bless his heart. Here goes Peter just jumping without even thinking, okay? Now, mind you, they're, come, they're coming in. They're, they're close to the shore. So Peter heard him say that, and he quickly wrapped his outer garment around him. Um, and because he was athletic, he dove right into the water to go to Jesus. Peter sees it now. He sees it now. Put your net in the water. You're going to catch great fish. Do what I tell you to, and this is what's going to happen. It's cause and effect. Okay, Albert Einstein did not come up with it. Jesus did. Right here. Cause and effect. So Peter now was like, Pow! his mind is blown. So he was like, holy cow, it is him. Jumps in the water and goes running to him. The other disciples then brought the boat to shore, dragging their catch of fish. They weren't far from land, only about 100 meters. And when they got to the shore, they noticed a charcoal fire with some roasted fish and bread. And then Jesus said, bring some of that fish you just caught. Let's eat together. So mind you, this is Jesus that's resurrected. He's come back from the dead. He's eating real fish on earth. We're going to be like him in heaven. He kept his scars. I hope I get to keep my tattoos. Maybe my pink hair. But I'm here to tell you, if I don't, I'm probably not going to be worried about it. I'm going to be a blubbering mess in front of Jesus and his feet. Come on. Bring some of the fish that you just caught. So Peter waded into the water and helped pull the net to shore. It was full of many large fish, exactly 153. But even with so many fish, the net was not torn. and the net was not torn. Both times. Now, I did a lot of, I, well, I did a lot for me, um, studying on this 153. Um, you know, there's, there's 
values and things that numbers mean. Okay, six is the number of man. Seven is the number of population. Um, lots of stuff. Lots of people said, nah, it's just an arbitrary number. Okay, hear me. I know my God, and my God doesn't just put numbers or arbitrary things in this book without a reason. With me. It's not just a number. That number is in there on purpose. So in reading the things that I looked at, read, my attention span so much and all that, well, God had to write a 25-page paper on 1 John, which is one chapter long. It's got like 32 verses in it, and I had to write a 22-page paper on it. Boy, how did I use all kinds of adjectives that I could write. Anyway, here's what I found. And of all the different things that I read, there's a couple of things that I believe. At that time, they had <coughs> discovered 153 different types of fish. Maybe he caught one of each of them. That would be, that would really be a miracle kind of, kind of thing. Not that God can't do that, he can do anything. But the 153 was also, at this time, the same number of types and tribes of people. So Peter, who is a fisherman of men, is going to catch one of every kind, includes all the food, doesn't matter what color your skin is, doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter what your baggage is, doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter what color eyes you have, doesn't matter if you like fish or not. Okay? Jesus has got you. Jesus is doing something big in us. He wants to. All we have to do is let him. Put your name in the water. Now he called me down here to catch people without roots. It was profound. We came down here on a Thanksgiving day eight years ago. It'll be nine years this Thanksgiving. And that's when the new sheriff hadn't come into town yet and everybody was sleeping around the jail in the courthouse. Lots of folks hanging out there. And, and care packages and I was talking to somebody and he said where's your church I, to to I said oh we're a homeless church because at that time the building we were in with the men's halfway house um, they wanted to sell it we that's not who we are and so we were house hopping and um, I said oh we're a homeless church and profoundly and audibly in my spirit God said and now you're going to minister to the homeless Okay, I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to figure it out. So I take it back to our church people with the roof, and I said, here's what we're going to do. We lost everybody but 12 people. I went downtown and it was hot and cold and the whatever, you know. And then, you know, remember I said my husband and I are different. So he's like, well, let's check out permits and let's check out the rules. And I'm like, oh, heck no, we're just going to show up and figure it out. Come on. I know it. So we showed up and figured it out because... We might have fished all night and caught no fish, but when the Lord said, put your net out, it's going to be a great catch. Trench warfare. I expect to be shot. I don't expect to be shot because somebody's acting a fool. Because you might get shot because of somebody else, so accountability. I may have to call you into accountability. But that's what family does, right? We come together as the ecclesia. We build one another up. We encourage one another. We spur one another on. We call each other on our stuff. We hold hands. We cry. We laugh. We eat. We're, we're only Baptists in that sense. Y'all, is the eating business. The rest of us is not Baptists. Which, by the way, okay, people ask all the time, well, are y'all seven-day Adventists since we meet on the Sabbath? No. Are you a non-denominational church? No, let's become a denomination. Hear me. We're just followers of Jesus Christ. If it says it in here, I believe it, and I'm going to preach it. If it's not in here, I'm not. That's not who we are. So this flock has a super blessing. I'm telling you, the number of people that have gotten in housing this year is astronomical. Especially since they said in December there's no more housing. Hey. Mm -hmm. Tell that to the 25 people that's not housing. For 
for the tiny number of workers and the tiny number of people with roofs in our community. Y'all, we added two more freezer refrigerators this week. Donated to us. So now that's four, five,
a year later, he said, please stop. I'm so embarrassed. I never asked that question. <laughs> but you know what? You need proof. Ask for it. He's a loving God. He doesn't mind giving it to you. Because he stands on the porch of the Father, waiting for the prodigal to come home. Even if you've never been with him before, you're still a prodigal. tradition and I absolutely love it. Everybody stand up and stick your hands out. We want something to the Whatever it is that you are needing, whether you need to fish all night and catch no fish so that you can see that the Lord is who he says he is, then ask for fish. Whether you need freedom from addiction, then tell the Lord that's what you need. Whether you need to know what your identity is in Christ as a son or a daughter, tell the Lord, man, I don't even know what it means to be a daughter or a son. I don't have any idea what I have lived all my life like an orphan. Yeah, well, they don't mean you have to live another single day like that. Father, there's folks that need healing today. Yeah. Amen. 